Is this the end of the motor? I've got switches from Sonoff in here, which I wired. Um, which I need to rewire. And we're gonna answer this question soon enough. Hey guys, before you start typing angry comments about either the clickbaiting title of this video, or the fact that I'm wrong and this is not end of Tasmota, probably you want to hear me out because I have a, what I think is compelling case in here. Some time ago, probably a year ago, I've covered these, but in gray. I have one of them in here. I should have had them on the table. Let me fix that. That's better, I even grab NS panels to illustrate a couple of points. I had Switchman M5 in the past, and they were just very basic switches that meant to go alongside NS panel or NS panel Pro if you wanted to stack them into a, a nice cluster of switches. Long story short, they were as bare-born as you could get, and my review got promptly followed up with a detailed instructions how to make one of these completely your own by flashing the motor. Now we are here and what I've got in hands are wide versions of Switchman M5 switches, which also support matter. Apart from the new color, which is obviously white, and the fact that they are basic, so they're not as fancy as something like this. This is a Sonoff TX Ultimate, a very fancy switch with RGB lights around it. They are as barebone as the original Switch Man M5. And is it a bad or a good thing? Well, you'll have to decide. But what you need to know about these is that they come with three different sizes. So you've got one gang, two gangs, and three gangs. You've got three different backplane sizes. So you've got European and American versions, so 120, 80, and 86. And that's it. <laughs> Just like other products from IT, they use 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi to connect to your network. They will use eWilling app and, in this case, Matter to be compatible with all the hubs that you might have at your home and allow you to turn on and off your lights up to three gangs. They are certified to switch up to over 2000 watts of power with slightly lesser limit on the three gang version. But honestly, who even has 2000 watts of power of light uh, connected to your, I don't know, living room? <laughs> Unless you're wearing a football pitch, then, well, you probably want a completely different device altogether. And probably the most important piece of information that you need at this point is that they require life and neutral, just the same as the original Switchman. So there is really nothing new in there. And before I get to answer the question from the title of this video, you'll have to bear with me just a little bit longer because I'm about to make my point. But first, I need to illustrate a little bit more features about these. As you can see, I wired them myself and you're dealing with mains. Get someone responsible to do it for you if you're not sure what you're doing, but take precaution if you're doing it yourself. The wiring is pretty standard and the only complaint I've got in here is that the number of terminals is insufficient, which means uh, you will have to split the neutral uh, line between all the outputs. It's not ideal, but it's not problematic, especially that son of God. Oh, I forgot one other thing. Let me get to this drawer there. Son of also got these, and these are the Wago style connectors, which have a really interesting form, and I really like them. So they've sent me these as well, so I could complete my wiring and have a demonstration for you. As I got shocked a couple of times by mains power and my stupidity. Control the gang. So this is the gang one and this is the gang two. Ow! It's nice to see those plastic covers that prevent me from touching the terminals, live terminals, uh, which is nice to see. And other than that, the wiring is pretty straightforward and only takes a couple of moments to screw in all the wires together and make a lights like this work. Once connected, my next test was to actually see how much power these things use in a standby mode because those are smart lights, they are connected 24-7 and this is probably something you are interested in. I've calculated that for a single switch, uh, you would pay approximately £1.30 per year, which is half a watt of power being constantly connected 24-7. And the current 
electricity tariff I'm on is relatively expensive and it's 26 p per kilowatt hour. And honestly, if you're hoping to use smart lights to save yourself some money, uh, you, you probably want to watch this article in there, which will explain you in detail how much you will pay for your smart home and how much it actually costs you to run it and how much money you can save that way. So definitely watch that if you're buying smart switches thinking <laughs> that you're going to make some savings. The first matter interchange is the pairing process in which you actually scan the same code that you would for the matter connectivity that allows you to link these switches to EWLink app. And the process honestly takes a couple of seconds, it's super quick, and uh, I had absolutely no problems with it. These devices have a small LED lights in front, which indicates the network connection, and also you can use them to put the device in a, a pairing mode. And within seconds, I was already connected and able to operate the switches from the smart app, which I'm promptly gonna illustrate now. That was actually faster than I was expecting it, because I'm using a local LAN network with a EWLink app. It is also possible. Okay, let's get rid of this light and get to the point. These are as simple as you get. What you get, it's a button. You press the button, the light comes on and comes off. If you're using EWLink app, you are exposed to extra features. You have an access to schedules and timers. You'll be also able to include these lights in EWLink based cloud automations and connect it to different devices from EWLink, which is nice. But the switch specific options are pretty limited. You have a power on state, default power on state, so they can retain and remember in what way they were set. You have a LED brightness control, so those little LEDs at the, each gang, they can be dimmed or disabled completely, but they are um, powered on when activated. And you have inching. Those three main options are really uh, available outside of the normal specification of the switch. Oh, I lied. There is also EWLink protocol, which enables Bluetooth connectivity between a switch and the EWLink remote enabled gadgets that you can uh, put inside your light. Now that you know what you can expect from the Switch 1 and 5, let's translate all of that from EWLink ecosystem into Matter without using EWLink ecosystem. The pairing process is exactly the same. You scan the code, you add the Matter device, and within seconds, these devices are available in your, for example, I've used Alexa uh, ecosystem. Now, they were showing us plugs for some reason, uh, but I was able to change the type of the device in Alexa app and they were showing as lights after. That's fine. And here I found what I was expecting all along. These devices no longer offer those special features. So the only thing that they actually offer via matter connectivity is turning your lights on and off. There's no brightness control for LED. There is no power on state, inching, none of that or even support for EWLink remote is gone. You're only going to get the main switching action, so all three gangs switching all the lights and all of that working great, but nothing else. The plot twist in this story is actually sharing devices from EWLink to Mata via share to Mata option in EWLink app, which allows you to add these switches to a Mata compatible devices so they can speak to them obviously via Matter protocol and allow you to configure those, those switches via EWLink app at the same time. Going through that process was a little bit confusing at first because my Alexa was linked to the EWLink skill already and discovered those switches already being added and I tried to add them via Matter. It worked well, but I needed to figure out which one's which, which was a challenge. But once I've paired them via EWLink share function uh, to generate the Matter code and add them this way, everything was working as expected and I still could preset those switches just the way I wanted to. But the act of uh, actually removing a switch from EWLink ecosystem meant that Switchman M5 would revert to default settings, which is a good thing for security reasons and a bad thing if you want to retain any of these features because they didn't stick. All of them were reset to default form and the device would become a responsive via matter because it was essentially removed from the ecosystem. Okay, I know you are confused right now, so where does the end of the task motor fit into this video because I haven't addressed this. So let's do just that. Previously on these little switches, I would flash task motor to have that exclusive EWLink free um, experience with switch button M5. 
But is there a point to doing this in a budget and simple wall switch like that where honestly pretty much anything I expect from it is just to turn the lights on and off? On top of these, these are only twice as expensive as those switches that I have on my wall. So they're not particularly expensive and what you get it's a very basic matter connected device that you can use in your home. Just plug it in your wall and start enjoying your smart home. On IT at store, M5 starts from $17.99. So that isn't very expensive and you've got a matter compatible device that does one thing, operates your light. And it does that over matter, so it doesn't <laughs> matter where you're gonna connect it, it still does the same thing. At this point, I don't really feel like I'm losing that much because those switches don't do anything exciting. And yeah, I won't be able to control the LED brightness for the switch positioning, which I don't care for. And I won't have the power on settings to stick, which I don't really care for. But I don't have to open it up and flash that motor to use those products cloud free. At least it will link cloud free, whatever you set up, you've got at home. So to put it plainly that well, the motor isn't going anywhere because it's great for these switches it's simply not worth using because if you can use matter and you already have a matter setup at your home, then you can just as it as is and and as long as you like me that you're not really bothered about those tiny LEDs and uh, the ability to retain interlock or um, switching power on state, you'll be just fine. All of that got me thinking about one more thing. Now we have these available in white, which they don't really look that nice next to the gray panel, right? I ask a question whether original M5 would be supported via Matter? The answer is no. No, because of the certification of the device, it's too late to kind of recertify it, they're not going to do it. Inside, they are nearly identical. The ESP on board has R2 designation, which is slightly different, but honestly, since you can have Tasmota with a Matter on this switch, you can enable Matter that way on the older versions. Unfortunately, there will be no OTA upgrades to your original E-Wing e devices that would bring the matter functionality to the older version of Switchman M5. So if you want to flash the old ones and add matter via the Smota, then I have a video already covering this aspect, which will be applicable to the new ones as well because everything else inside is kept the same. So yeah, that's an, still an option. It's just an option I probably won't gonna to take. Big thanks to ITAD for sending me this so I could cover them for you. And I have some more Sonos devices in my box waiting to be reviewed. So stick around if you're interested in that. Let me know whether you would keep matter interface as it is and use the switches in that form and not bother with those two tiny features that you're not getting. Or whether you would go through the effort of soldering pins and flashing the motor on a matter enabled device. Uh, to make it truly yours and bother with the small time. As for now, I don't have a posting schedule. You know how YouTube works. I'm going to explain you all that. There is a couple of social media links that you probably want to follow me on to know what's going on, what I'm working on, etc, etc, etc. So big thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.